Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, that is what here. Lamb chop, steak free. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I am looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. There are times when the sound of my hotel room door closing triggers a temporary amnesia about where I really am. The hiss of air conditioners suggests the ambient noise of pressurized cabins, which suggests the murmur of a shopping mall, suggesting the background noise of an expensive restaurant, suggesting the hushed clink of room service dishes being collected by maids a few doors back down this hallway I'm in now. And with each step forward, an existential nausea rises up within as my mind searches frantically for the question that all sentient, all sentient creatures must ask if only to quell the choking panic that signifies the final descent into the chaotic question of madness. So, what was that big existentialist question again? Oh, yeah. Uh, where are we? We could be anywhere, really. Anywhere in the world. Just another big anonymous hotel. Well... Okay, maybe not exactly anywhere. There's a, there's a clue. In a strange, foreign, faraway land, how to enjoy yourself, how to eat well, what to do, how to do it. Rule one, get the hell away from the hotel as quickly as possible. Hey, how you doing? Hello. Let's get lost. There are a few things as exciting as the first time you hurtle through the nighttime streets of a strange new city. And nothing delivers the sights, sounds, and smells of those streets right to the pleasure centers of the brain like a tuk-tuk. A golf cart crossbred with a rickshaw, given the noisy heart of a lawnmower, tuk-tuks have neither doors nor windows. Air conditioning is not an option. All that open air makes it the perfect vehicle to introduce you to Thailand's foodie wonderland the city of Chiang Mai. Nice climate, food everywhere. It's really nice here. As opposed to the crowded, hectic, urban pace of Bangkok, many Thais still view Chiang Mai as their ancient northern capital with more traditional culture and cuisine. There's a lot to love about this town. Its small size makes it a remarkably easy and fun city to get lost in. I've been walking the streets, eating street food, stall food, you know, my usual routine. And as I'm becoming more advanced in age, lazier, more indolent, I think it's about time I eat a sit-down meal. Arun Rai, where everything is supposed to be good. Very popular restaurant, been around a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll have uh, one of everything. There's absolutely nothing bland about northern Thai food, with its unflinching use of fiery hot chilies in just about everything you eat. A little plain rice first, as is the custom. Nam Prik, a local Chiang Mai specialty. Pulverized fried chilies, shrimp paste, tomato, and a multitude of other incendiary components. It's a little bowl of screaming hot goodness. Mm, all got me. Okay, so when your tongue is burning and your head feels like it's gonna explode and brain matter's gonna come oozing out of your ears, you just reach to the immediately located sticky rice, grab a hunk. Oh yeah. Sweet, aromatic, cools you right down. Next up, a little mackerel. Looks like it's pan fried. Could have been deep fried some time ago, I might add. He's been sitting at room temp for some time. This pretty much violates everything I was taught in culinary school as far as what I should put in my mouth. But this being Thailand, those rules don't apply. Damn, that's good. That's the best thing I've had on this table so far. And this was one of those my eyes said yes, but my brain said no, no. Well, my eyes were right. Now, I don't really fully know what this is. It looked like a nice cooling salad, but it's got some heat. All I can tell you is that after a mouthful of this, you really need this. So, just in case there is still not enough pain and heat in your life, 
can just put some of this little fish sauce pepper onto your rice. You see this all over? It's kind of like the ketchup of this country. Oh, it's salty, but with the heat that will just lift you right out of your pants. Beats ketchup, believe me. I like it here. Okay, but man does not live by heat alone. So it's off into the Chiang Mai night to hunt down something sweet for dessert. Yeah, Yankees. Yankee hat, good man. Now, this may look like a fly-by-night operation, but the Chiang Mai Night Bazaar has been flying every night, rain or shine, holidays included, for over 500 years. In all that time, the locals have been feeding everyone from Ming Dynasty trade caravans to German tour buses. And thankfully, they still haven't gotten around to translating most of the signs. I mean, I have absolutely no idea what a single word, anything on any of these signs, but it looks good. People are eating. It's gotta be good, right? Come on, let's eat. I'm so dazzled by all this food, I almost forgot that I just ate, and that I came here to get something from the dessert department. Bananas or plantains? Thank you. Okay, now this looks like dessert. Mmm, sweet, the perfect dessert. Wow, those little packets, I wanna know what's inside. It tastes like olives and fish. I don't think I like it. No, it's coming on now. I definitely don't like it. But hey, it could be worse, come on. Okay, much worse. People who've read my book, Kitchen Confidential, the riveting rip the lid off the restaurant business expose that had the whole nation rocking with laughter and afraid to eat fish on Monday, might remember what I had to say about mussels. Even I have my limits. Yeah, that's definitely where I draw the line. Hmm, bright, shiny dessert things. Ooh, ooh, that looks good. And those unearthly colors. The best banana roti? We'll see about that. I've only had one dessert so far, and this looks pretty promising. It's a banana egg crepe with condensed milk and sugar on top. Delicious. Nothing like an independently owned and operated fast food outlet. Hey, it's my favorite soap opera on the TV. Everyday life whizzing by me in the background. This is a way to live. Okay, my brain knows this is Thailand, so why do I feel like I'm somewhere in the Midwest? These aren't the colors of Asia. I can't hear the sounds of Thailand. It doesn't smell like Chiang Mai. And this is not my breakfast. All right, well, I've foregone breakfast at the hotel, but of course, as we all know, breakfast is the most important meal of the day. A healthy and nutritious breakfast is essential. That shiny coat, wagging tail, and good disposition, so important in a television host. So when I'm looking for a nutritious breakfast in a faraway town, I see where the locals are eating, and I saw a lot of people hanging around here, so this has got to be good. Now, I can imagine some of you saying, gee, Tony, is it really all that easy? Well, yes and no. Leaving behind the tour bus and the Western Hotel can be a bit disorienting. Few of the signs are translated, and most of the locals, of course, have limited English skills. All right, one jog with pork. But a little persistence and a bit of finger pointing are a small price to pay for a real taste of a new and unfamiliar culture. Yeah, that looks good. Right now, they're serving breakfast in this new and unfamiliar culture and it looks pretty tasty. This, I'm reliably informed, is a bowl of jog. It's only jogging I do at any time during my day. And it's very pretty. I would say this is like abdo limono soup or egg crop soup. It's little pork meatballs in what tastes like farina, a little coconut, some ginger, and scallion. Just as much starch as a Denny's Grand Slam breakfast. It's delicious. They do breakfast much better over here. They really do. Uh, the eternal question, do I save the meatball till the soup's almost gone, or do I just go ahead? It's going to well serve as a parable for my whole life. Eat the meatball now, or you at the rest later. OK, now, usually I don't have dessert after breakfast, but I saw this place doing a lot of business when I came in. Can I have uh, one, please? Coconut cream, 
and some sort of gelatinized vegetable matter. Well, that's great. I bet it's probably good for me, too. Thank you. Nothing beats a home-cooked meal. So while in Chiang Mai, I thought I'd have a, uh, a local named Napa, runs a little guest house. Uh, I thought I'd have her cook me a home-cooked meal. She was nice enough to oblige. So it's off to the market we go. Now, I know that being on television is supposed to make you an expert on everything. But honestly, unlike a lot of my peers, I'm a lot better at eating Thai food than talking informatively about it. It's eggplant. Eggplant? Special eggplant. Sweet basil, I think. It's ginger. It's a ginger variation or just ginger. OK, I do know one thing for sure. These are called mouse dropping chilies because they're tiny. Terrific. The only Thai chili I can identify is named after a health code violation. This will be, by the way, the least informative segment I've ever done. Thank God I brought my Lonely Planet food guide. I think I can check all of this stuff in the book. Later, I did some quick research on our ingredients. The standard chili of Thailand, the one you see all over the place, sky-pointing chili because of the finger-like shape. Now, the other ones, the tiny little guys, those are the famous mouse-dropping chilies. In English, often known as bird's eye chili, but I like the mouse dropping chili thing better. The big ginger like thing was a galango. It's similar appearance to ginger, but the interior of the root is harder, has a deeper, more savory, less spicy flavor. Okay, we got that squared away. Having satisfied my professional curiosity, I feel free to indulge my wanderlust while my meal's cooking. So, what have we learned today? If in an organized group, break free from the group at every opportunity, and then enjoy. Revel in your freedom in a faraway and strange place. OK. Now I've got to hurry back and uh, be a good guest. OK, good guests don't do what I'm about to do. But good food and impulse control, well, they don't mix in my world. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Hello, Kiang Kiao Wan, a coconut-based green curry with chicken. Life is beautiful again. Later on, while we're eating tom yum gun, a hot and sour soup with prawns, no less, I start to question whether I have any impulse control at all, as my senses drift back to the roadside sausage stands I've passed earlier. Dreaming of food while eating food? Do I have a problem here? No way, not a bit. I wasn't dreaming of food. I was dreaming of roadside sausages. I think for sausages, I don't know what that says about me. Glistening, mystery sausages cooked on a street corner. Sausages, beautiful Scooby snacks. Oh, got to half. Yeah, look at those. Oh, beautiful. Good. You know that's good. Oh, man. Oh, that is great. You know those Italian sweet fairs where it's all that generic sweet and hot sausage? I can never resist those, by the way, so I don't want to sound like a snob, but this is it. Got the state of the art sauce. Look at that, all that fresh ingredient inside. Good, delicious. So good. If this was like the only thing I ate in this country, I would be happy. I could see developing a serious addiction to this. Hi, my name is Tony Bourdain, and I'm a roadside sausage addict. Ever since arriving here in northern Thailand, I've been driven by the idea of getting lost. Willfully, deliberately lost. Breaking away from the tourist trail, leaving the beaten path, sitting down with some locals and eating what they eat. Now, I really like Chiang Mai City, and it's a great place to get lost in. But it's still a city. I need to hit the road. I gotta go up country, get away from the crowds. Oh yeah, no souvenir stands here. No expat bars, chain restaurants, no reference points. Lost, really lost, with just a gnawing hunger to guide me. I have no idea where I am, and I'm happy about that. I said I wanted to get lost, right? That's what this is all about, getting lost, going off the beaten track. So I'm about, I don't know, 60, 70 miles outside of Chiang Mai City. Yeah. Yeah. This is off the road, and it is utterly, enchantingly, magically beautiful. 
Well, I'm counting on that worldwide tradition, and I found this to be true anywhere on Earth. If you show up hungry, you show up for dinner, just about everybody in the world will feed a wandering stranger in need of a meal. So, I'm hungry, and I'm hopeful. How about this place? Party going on. Okay, who's got the keg? Oh, this does look like a party. Okay, I don't remember going to school with any of these guys, but I better clear this up right away. What's she rolling over there, man? Tobacco. Locally grown tobacco product, rolled up in banana leaf. How do I say, uh, can I score one of those bad boys off you dudes? I used to smoke Luckies. I think I can handle this. Known locally as Buri Shio, it turns out to be a pleasant surprise. It's delicious. <laughs> this motion, that could only be good, right? In the kitchen, the real action is going on. While some members of this extended household prep the elements of our meal, I'm introduced to another northern Thailand specialty. All right, if I understand this correctly, you take a fermented tea leaf named mang, wrap it around a piece of salt, pop it in your mouth, and chew. Mm. Boom. And I guess swallow. Oh, you do? You spit? OK, next time I'll get the whole story first. I basically do the equivalent of swallowing my chow and tobacco already. Clearly, a decision was made at this time to keep me away from the kitchen for the greater good of the community. I mean, how come no one else has heard about this ancient tradition? Honoring uninvited dinner guests by making formal introductions to farm animals and pets? My dog. <laughs> See, I'm nice to dogs, in spite of all the mean stuff I say. Oh. At this point, we head inside as final preparations are underway for a traditional Kantok dinner. The Kantok dinner is usually characterized as sitting on floor mats around low circular tables with sticky rice serving as the only utensil. Our dinner features a variety of water buffalo dishes, including spicy buffalo tartare with tripes mixed in. In addition to the other cooked buffalo dishes, there are salads, dips, chicken soup and vegetables, the exotic-looking fruit named the mangosteen, which is, of course, in no way related to the mango, and a sentimental favorite of mine, fried pork rinds. Fried pork rinds, good in any language. Mm. You know, everyone has an opinion about what goes best with everything. Mm -hmm. Wild thyme. Thyme goes best with a cooked buffalo. Oh, that's good. Aroy, aroy. That's good. This gentleman made that buffalo. It's good. Okay. okay, so all from one animal. Sliced cooked buffalo. These are essentially the same. This is, but this is like buffalo tartare, different spices, and that's cooked. Hmm, I wonder if the after dinner chew will ever replace the digestif. <laughs> that translates to who is this joker who just wandered in here and why did we feed him? I think you'll have to admit that no officially sanctioned taste of Thailand extravaganza will ever give you an experience like this. Okay, all my foodie friends who've been to Thailand all say the same thing, pretty much like this. Dude, you've got to try the papaya salad. They were on and on and on about this papaya salad with evangelical zeal, the best thing they've ever eaten in their lives, so my friends say. So I, I'm not leaving town without trying some of this stuff. This better be good. Wen Pen is a busy place. The menu covers a wide variety of Northern Thailand cooking styles, and I see plenty I'd like to sample. But it's papaya salad that brought me here, the papaya salad I shall have. The ingredients are simple enough. Peanuts, chilies, julienne green papaya, more chilies, and dried shrimp. A few good wax with the mortar and pestle to encourage the flavors to merge. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but dude, it is amazing. It's delicious. I mean, it, it is really, really good. I could see why my friends flipped over this. Oh, and those little mouse dropping peppers there. Mm. That's where your heat's coming from. Usually salad for me, frankly, is rabbit food. This is a full tongue heat, top, bottom, and down into your throat, roof of your mouth, lips. Oh yeah, that burns all the way down into my stomach. Got a little cool down here. I'm getting to really like this whole practice. The little basket of hot, sticky rice. You know, hot, cool, hot, cool. Yeah, look at that. 
colorful, delicious. I can see what my friends like about this. This is good. But I'll tell you, somebody who orders this, not knowing, if you were running a fusion restaurant and you see this on in the salad section, you would have some very surprised customers. I mean, around 50% would be utterly delighted. Probably know what they were getting into. The other half would just be you know, screaming for water. I wonder whether they should risk more here. Best salad I've had in memory. I don't eat a lot of salads, but this is pretty damn good. It's pretty, it's exotic, it's crunchy, it's fresh, and it hurts like hell, in a good way. That might be the best salad I ever had. With the memory of my trip to the country still fresh in mind, there's one last question I'd like answered before I leave Chiang Mai. Is it truly the case that transportation sector employees possess a qualitatively superior culinary insight? Or in other words, do truck, cab, or in this case, tuk-tuk drivers really know the best places to eat? So I pop the question. So you know someplace good to eat for noodles? We go. Oh, this is the place. You hungry? Good, come on, man. Be my guest. Oh, yeah, this is what I've been waiting for. Oh, yeah, yeah, that looks good. We sit down with a few of the other drivers, and after a brief round of introductions, I get right to the point. So this is the place Tok Tok drivers eat? Which noodles are best? We like to try the wonton soup. Fish noodles with wonton? Yep. What do you guys have it? Same with you. All right, we're good to go. And go is the operative word here. Given a workday that can extend from 8 in the morning till 10 or 11 at night, Tuk Tuk drivers place a high premium on prompt service. As our dishes arrive, I ask about one of my favorite local customs. Now, I understand you don't say hello, how are you? They say, have you eaten yet? I, I know, I like to hear that. While we wait for the rest of our dishes, my new friends give me the rundown on the basic heat options. Hot chutney, fish sauce, pepper, keep it coming. Oh yeah, that is good. Arroy, arroy. Yummy. That it is. Of course, since I like this so much, I want to know what everybody else is eating. Crab noodle soup with the fish bowl and also the pork. That's a pork sausage? Yeah. And uh, this one, the fish sausage. Okay, I gotta get one of these too. Yeah. Okay, first I had the wonton soup, and now I'm trying this uh, glass noodle soup with wonton, fish balls, sausage, the works. And plenty of chili sauce. The sound of quality. Come on, slurping noodles. Late at night, a bunch of my fellow workers. I found it, I've hit the main vein. It's right here. It doesn't get any better than this. So this is my last bit of advice. If you're having trouble getting lost in Chiang Mai, you might ask your Tuk Tuk driver. Anything they recommend has gotta be more fun than that tour bus.